We want to welcome you who are watching by television to Word of Life Church, home of the Mission Cathedral, where people find freedom and victory in Christ. Well, I thought you might enjoy this joke. A man was sobering up from all night drinking and finally came to the Sunday Mass. And as he was listening to the sermon, he couldn't stay up and he finally falls asleep right there in service. Well, the priest had been watching him all along, noticing his apparent hangover and his drunken state, and the priest was disgusted. At the end of the sermon, the preacher decides to make an example of him. He says to his congregation, all those wishing to have a place in heaven, please stand. And the whole church stands up except the drunk who's sobering up. He still is snoring. Well, they eventually all sit down. Then the preacher says even more loudly, and he who would like to find a place in hell, please stand up, he shouted. And just then, they got the drunk awake. He stood up. And as he's looking around, he looks to the priest and says, Father, I don't know what we're voting for, but evidently you and I are the only ones for it. <laughs> All right. How many of y'all brought your Bibles? Lift them up real high. Make Jesus glad and the devil mad. Say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I believe in it from Genesis to Revelation. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. You hear that, devil? I will never, ever, ever be the same in Jesus' name. Turn to someone right next to you, look him straight in the eye and say, did you hear that, child of God? I will never, ever, ever be the same again. Well, God bless you. You all look fantastic today. If you would, open up your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. And now, precious Father, I just thank you for the anointing that you placed upon this word and, and upon me as your vessel today. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to all the people here and the many more watching by television as well and online and just minister to us by your spirit. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So that we can all be on the same wavelength, let me just tell you what we're teaching about. We're teaching about the divine order of faith. We're showing that faith has sequential steps to get from the problem to the solution. We all know about faith, but many of us don't realize faith is orderly. The passage that proves this is Colossians 2, verse 5, in the King James Version. It says, I am with you in spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Notice, faith has an order to it. So when you deal with order, order usually has sequential steps to it, like, like a, a cookbook. When you're cooking a meal, there's step one, buy the product. Do this, and, and if you skip the steps, you're not going to enjoy the meal. So it is with faith, if we want to get from our problems to the answer, there's generally sequential steps to get from A to Z. But a lot of folks never get to Z because they just wanted to leap from A and jump to Z wreck, without realizing there are things to go before you get there. The first step that we talked about is identify the problem. If you think problem is C when it's really A, then you're in trouble. You already misdiagnosed the problem. Secondly, make a quality decision to overcome the problem God's way. Once you diagnose the problem, what does the word of God say to answer that? Then make a decision, you're going to do it God's way. And then third, find your title deed to an answer in God's word. That's a fancy way of saying find scriptures that promise you the answer. What does the Word of God say? What promise are you standing on? So that now brings us to number, th number four. But before I mention number four, let's look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Uh, it says this, um, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. How many of y'all want victory? You want victory over addictions. You say, man, when am I going to get rid of the cigarettes, the alcohol problems, the drug abuse? You can overcome that through faith. 
But today I want to talk about something that is so neglected by many sincere believers. If you would, go to Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, we're going to deal with step number four in the divine order of faith. So Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Consequently, faith, what does faith do? It helps us overcome. It gives us victory. Consequently, faith comes. How many of y'all, if you're going to have faith to overcome, you need faith to come to you. How does it come? Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. The King James puts it this way. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you need faith, then guess what you have to do is hear the word. But not, it does not, does not say faith cometh by having heard. See, some po folks say, well, you know, I already heard that. Well, you might have said, I already had a steak last year. I don't need another one. How many of y'all know you still need the steak even though you had one last year? Even though you had it last week, you still keep eating. You don't say, I once ate several years back, so I know what food tastes like. Friend, you wouldn't even be here if you didn't keep on eating. Because what the, the, the Greek says is faith comes by hearing. That word hearing is, is a specific Greek word, a Greek tense, tense that we don't have in the English language. We have past, present, and future. In Greek, they have what is called a present participle, which meant faith continues to come. In fact, if you look at the King James Version, you get that sense. Faith cometh by hearing. Come on. Faith cometh by hearing and... Oh, stop. Faith cometh by hearing and... Faith cometh by hearing and... Why does he repeat himself? Why didn't he simply say faith cometh by hearing the word of God? Couldn't he shorten it? But the reason why the King James puts it this way is to give us an understanding that the word hearing is a continual present tense verb, which means it is constantly coming. In other words, I need to keep hearing the word. I can't just heard the word last year or heard the word last week, and that's sufficient. I have to keep hearing and hearing and hearing. Why do I need to keep hearing? Because are you ready for this? Faith is expendable. You use your faith as you walk with the Lord. Faith has quantity to it. That's why the Bible says we grow in faith. If you grow in faith, that means you can have more faith than you had before. Otherwise, you could not grow in it. Romans, 14, or, uh, Romans 12 says each one of us have been given a measure of faith. If faith is measurable... You can have more faith or less faith. Jesus often said, oh, ye of little faith. So if someone has little faith, they can have a lot of faith. See, faith is measurable. So now, watch this. Since faith is measurable and faith is what makes me overcome the world, then I need to add to my measure and keep adding it because I keep spending it. I keep using it. In other words, I might have a certain level of faith today, but if I don't replenish my faith by constantly hearing, then I get lower on faith. It, do you get this? Um, like food. You, you have to keep eating all the time. Why? Because your food turns into fuel, Fuel turns into energy, and that energy enables you to keep living. So you have to keep eating. For women, I'm told you have to eat every three hours. Didn't mean a huge meal every three hours. Just you eat a little bit. Men have to eat every five hours. There has to be constantly food coming into us. Why? Because we expend the energy. So you keep eating. You don't just to stay alive, just to keep expending the energy. So it is with faith. When you're walking in faith and you encounter trials, your faith is being expended to overcome that problem. But if you don't replenish what you just spent, 
you're going to have no faith. And with no faith, you're not going to overcome. But see, we have it in our minds sometimes that as long as I used to have faith, I once had faith, I once accepted the, of the Lord, I, I once learned about faith and miracles, I, I learned it, but we're thinking because we once had it, that's enough. We keep spending it and expending it. It's like a car. You have to keep putting gas. It doesn't matter if it's a Ferrari or a Yugo. They both need gas. And you have to keep refueling it or the car conks out. This will explain why it doesn't matter how old you are as a Christian. You can be a believer for 30 years and have absolutely no faith when a new believer has just come to the Lord and has great faith. Why? Because faith is not something you store once and for all and it's always stored. So every time I, see, it's not that. So if that was the case and it's all stored and never spent, never expended, that means every time we would hear the word, our faith would get bigger and bigger and bigger and just, just all of a sudden we would be a spiritual giant. I've been in the Lord for 30 years and I, all 30 years of hearing the word has made me a giant. It doesn't work that way. Because how many of y'all, would you, you have eaten Thousands and thousands of pounds of food and not one of you are close to that weight. Why? Because you use the food and you transform it into energy and it's gone. That's how Jesus described hearing the word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So just as I need bread every day, so I could expend its energy and live. I need the word of God every day that gives me faith to overcome. But I expend that faith every day. So I need to replenish it. If I don't replenish it, I'm empty. I don't care if I've been a Christian for 30 years, I'm empty. If I don't continue to hear the word of God. Imagine uh, you see a 30-year-old car. 200,000 miles on the odometer. And then you see a nice, fresh car coming right off the showroom, barely new. Would you then think and assume that that car that's been 200,000 miles driven for 30 years, that it has more gas in the tank than that new one that came off the showroom? Would it have more gas because it's been driven for a long time? You say, well, no, because it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if, if it's a 30-year-old car. It still has to have gas replenish. That will answer why it's possible to be a Christian for 30 years and have the devil beat you up. Whip you silly. Bring you addictions, sicknesses, poverty, lack, fear, depression, worry, anxiety, and you look like hell. How long have you known Jesus? 30 years. 200,000 miles on the odometer. Then what's wrong? I don't understand, Bishop. I should be strong because I've been in the Lord for 30 years. And I still have these problems. What's the problem? Because you're reading the odometer, not the tank. You see? The car doesn't run because of the odometer reading. It doesn't run faster because of the odometer reading. What matters is there is gas in the tank. That's the fuel. Faith is the fuel that helps us overcome and the way we get the fueling station to get the faith is by hearing and 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 hearing. And after you've been hearing, guess what you got to do tomorrow? Hear and hear and hear. But I already know 
good. No, you don't. Because knowing something and experiencing it are two different things. I'll give you an example. Would you all agree with me that worry and fear is not faith? Right? How many of you have been a Christian for at least 30 years or more? Let me see your hands. All right, keep your hand up. All right, there you are. 30 years or more. Now, have you ever worried since being a Christian for 30 years or more? Why? Don't you know it's wrong? Do you know it's wrong? Then why are you doing it? You know why? Because even though we have the idea of faith and we believe in it, we need to keep hearing the word to drive out the fear and worry. Because if we don't hear it, the fear and worry rules. And even though your odometer reads 200,000 miles, it doesn't matter. You got to refuel the tank. And some Christians don't seem to get this. They just, they, they sometimes have an arrogant position that as long as they know the word and their belief has been accurate, that's all there is to it. The reason, but it, it doesn't work that way. And the reason why we need to keep hearing and hearing, because God made us, now listen to me, God made us to be creatures that need motivation. That's who we are. We never do the right thing because we once were told what the right thing was. You have to be told over and over again about what is right to do the right thing. We need motivation. For example, when it comes to losing weight, you need motivation to do it. You can start off on January the 1st. Bless God, I am going to lose weight. And I mean, you're a gung-ho. You have all the motivation. I'm going to do it. I'm ready. And on January the 1st, you're fasting. You're eating right. And by January 28th, you're having two orders of Chico Tacos fries and a king-size hot dog with a diet soda. Well, what happened, friend? You were so gung-ho, you were full of motivation. You were going to do it. What happened in 28 days? I don't know. You know why? Because you did not get motivated constantly. You lost the motivation. Because we're creatures that need to be motivated. If you're a parent, you know your kids need motivation. Because if they don't, they won't do their homework. They won't throw out the trash. They won't do their chores. They need to constantly being told. Why? Because that's the kind of people we are. I wish God made us so that we just have to have it told one time. Just, just one time. Just tell me one time. I got it. That's it. Got it one time. I, I know what to believe. I know what to do. It, it went right in. And it would last a lifetime. That would be awesome. Be awesome if we didn't need to put fuel in the tank. Just one time. One fuel, that's it. We're covered. But we need to constantly be, even if you have an electric car, you need it to be charged up. You know, it's just the way we are. Because this world winds down. You get a radio, it's going to wind down. The battery goes out. You have to charge it. It's just the way it is. The more you use it, the more you have to charge it up. The more trials you have, the more difficulties, that means you've got to get more of the word because you're having so much pressure on you. So if you're going through pressure in life, you need to keep hearing the word to replenish what you just spent by overcoming those trials. That means... As a believer for 30 years, it doesn't mean, because I've been a believer for 30 years, that I'm going to automatically have as much faith as, or more faith than you have who are just a new believer. You could actually have more faith than me if I don't hear the word. See, and so that's why we have to keep hearing 
the word of God and hearing and hearing and hearing. And, and it can't just be heard once. But how do we hear the word? Well, there's three basic ways to hear the word. Number one, you read scriptures. You, you hear the word through scriptures. Number two, you can confess God's word. Say it out loud. And you'll hear yourself say it, right? But can I tell you, the number one way to hear the word is found right here in this passage. Notice verse 17. How does it start off? Consequently, faith comes by hearing. Notice the word consequently. Do you ever begin a conversation with someone with the word consequently? The King James says, so then, even that phrase, so then, you don't begin something with consequently, so then. You don't meet a lost friend that you haven't seen for 30 years and come to him and shake his hand and say, consequently. He's going to look at you and say, did we have a conversation? You don't begin that way. Consequently is an important word because it tells us how faith was coming or how we were hearing the word that produced faith. So how were we hearing it? Back up then to verse 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? Who, how was he saying faith comes? When we hear the word preached. That's a mistake many Christians make. They'll say, you know, I'm reading my Bible. I, I don't need to go to church and hear the word preach. I don't need to hear preachers preach. I have my Bible. And, and why hear from an indirect person? Why, why hear from the second source? Since the Bible is God's word, I'm just going to read the scriptures. And as I read the scriptures, faith will come. Well, if that's the case, why does Paul talk about the preacher that is sent to preach? The hearing the word was the preacher that was preaching the word. And faith comes greater when you hear someone that is gifted and anointed to teach give you the word. That's when faith comes. If, it didn't, if that wasn't God's way, then why don't you just stay home and just read the Bible by yourself? Why not instead, why don't we just all stop preaching and just all stop and just read scriptures? Because faith doesn't come primarily by reading scriptures. It does come. But the primary way is when someone expounds on those scriptures. That's when faith comes. It's the preacher that preaches the word. I'll give you proof of that in the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Here's how Paul says the worship service should be. He says, until I come, um, give yourself to the public reading of scripture. But what does the next... Verse 8, and to preaching and teaching. So wait a minute. That means there's a role for the gifted preacher and gifted teacher to expound on the reading of Scripture. You, you see this? So if we don't need preachers preaching, why does he say, and to teaching and preaching? So the public, so reading Scripture is not sufficient. Now, has, it, has it, this been true in your life? That you can read the scriptures, but when you come to church and you hear the bishop or the pastor or one of our guest speakers preaching, do you notice how much more you get out of it than when you just sat and read? Why? Because the preacher is gifted and anointed to do what you can't get by reading the scriptures alone. So the preacher preaches the word, and that's how faith comes. 